<laughs> okay, so let's call the meeting to or, or to order, not Orca. <laughs> call the meeting to order. Um, and the goal tonight is to continue our discussion and review of um, some proposed rules of procedure. Oh, there's John. Hey, John. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing, Denise? Good. Beautiful day, huh? It's beautiful. I'm in New York, unfortunately, so oh. less beautiful. Yes, of course. Let that. So we agreed to meet um, tonight ahead of the regular agenda to continue our discussion um, and looking at some proposed rules of procedure. Does everybody have that or Cliff, can you call it up? Yeah, give me a sec here. It's being really slow opening the document. Yeah, I think that's the way it's gonna to be tonight for whatever reason. <clears throat> okay, should be able to see it now. There we go. Thank you. So each year we adopt rules of procedures. Things got kind of turned around last year because as soon as we were starting to meet after town meeting, COVID hit. So we had to deal with some of those issues. Um, so we should review some rules of procedure to guide us in our duties. Mm -hmm. I think I th I've checked around other towns and looked at other towns rules of procedure um, mm -hmm. some of the language proposed here is kind of standard language from VLCT and some of it has been modified and suggested as um, adopting some different language So the first A and B and C1 are just kind of standard. Right. C, yeah. C2 kind of gets into some more um, ideas of sharing. And I did look in the VLCT handbook and it says occasion, occasionally a select board will appoint some of its members or a group of citizens to study and make recommendations on a particular issue. All such committees and subcommittees are subject to the open meeting law and must follow all of its notice and record keeping requirements. So do we interpret that to mean even if it's a subcommittee of two? No, I don't know because that's just, that's not a quorum. Right. So my, my interpretation is if it's a select board appointed committee, like the roads committee, for instance, when we were, when they were meeting, you know, they needed to post their notices and take minutes because that was an official select board appointed committee. I agree with that. On the mm -hmm. other hand, if we later on tonight appoint Rick and John, to work with the town hall culvert folks, um, then that's a delegation of, mm, what's the way to say it? It's a delegation of sussing out the issue, getting all the facts organized, um, packaging it succinctly, for a board discussion. They're not making decisions. Right, they it's are, all information gathering, basically. And it's, in, it's information gathering and yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, like we could, go ahead, Denise. I could see that working for that unless that ends up being some kind of a subcommittee where we, where Scott's in, you know, where Scott's involved and Pam and 
other people are involved in their meeting um, to discuss it. So I want to make I want to make sure we think about that. Well, does that does that involve? I mean, is there a difference for some, like a, a subcommittee, like you're talking about, a group that would be fleshing out ideas themselves and not not they wouldn't be bringing certain things. They would choose what to bring forward to a select board. Do they have to? Does that then become a public meeting and a you know a delegation of authority because they're actually blocking out? Yeah, that's what we have. We have to think about that because, you know, getting, having somebody as a point person, for instance, to gather information and such, you know, if, if as one select board member, if I'm going to be asked to make a decision on something, I'm going to want to know um, all the information in which to base my right. decision and right. vote and not have it filtered. But, but, <clears throat> but, um, let's 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 consider what do we mean by filtered? You know, over and over we've asked um, folks on town staff to digest the options, present the options with risks, costs, merits, and a recommendation. To me, that's that's just good sure. man management. We've got all the information. But we've also got a little spotlight on the one that somebody's put a lot of thought time into recognizing makes the most sense. Yeah, I can I can see that. Um, but again, as one select board member, I would like to make sure that I'm well informed and have information in which to base my decision and vote. So that so none of this means you don't have the information, Denise. Right. It does mean that <clears throat> that you might be challenged to let go a little bit of asking all the detailed questions because somebody else has done all of that and sifted through the material. I mean, if we have the material, we can do that offline. But I personally am would be elated to have Rick and John with their engineering heads and whatever sifting yeah, through sifting through information and getting making sure it's all there making sure that the you know a lot of time in the, our meetings we spend time just getting down to what are you asking what are you asking right now and do, taking that out of the room knowing what the ask is looking through the material um it doesn't mean that we can't have the material but but and, and I think that pros and cons and options with a recommendation is a really good framework for being succinct in our decision making. Doesn't, again, doesn't mean you don't have the information to sift through, but um, a lot of that sort of sifting is done outside. And that could be done, I would expect it could be done with, if, if we had two people, it could still be done with um, Scott and Pam and whoever else, mm -hmm. um, because the the whole the whole package is in our materials. Um, maybe summary notes are there, and there we're not delegating a decision outside. We're delegating information gathering and digesting so that we can be more succinct in our in our work at the board level. Yeah, and as we're doing that, you know, a different board member might have a question that the two people that we delegate, let's say, hadn't thought of. So I'd want to make sure we have opportunity for that. Yeah, Denise is absolutely right that way. And I, I agree with Sharon completely, too. In a way, this, this imposes a discipline on all of us. If we're all taking on different kind of specialty areas, let's say, then it say John and I are working on transport, transportation, it's our job to prepare the materials in advance of those meetings so that you, Sharon or Denise, you have a chance to read through that and look. I mean, like you said, we have our kind of our executive you know, summary conclusions, but there's enough background in there that you can say, wait a minute, what's this is missing. And I wanna hear that. You know, I know a lot about transportation, but you know what? I can't tell you the number of times that 
people have told me after designing a project, say that I worked on it, that I missed something, you know, I, or I didn't know about it. So it's a value to me. And that, I mean, I think we just have to, in prep, in pre, if we prepare materials properly, when we go and or, you know, we want to make sure you're prepped to be able to make that decision. And whatever we're recommending is there, but you should have enough to question. Mm -hmm. There's no okay. question. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we're really clear. Um, Cliff or John, do you have any thoughts? Well, I have my hand up. Um, oh, I couldn't see you, sorry. I, yeah, it's okay. So I, I agree with Denise that the board needs to have all the information so they can draw their own independent conclusions. But most times we do defer um, to folks who are either officially or unofficially assigned. You know, historically we've had select board members who volunteer to take on various roles. So we have uh, select board members who volunteer to meet with staff periodically, sometimes weekly. Uh, we have select board members that are on various committees, the town hall committee, and then they report back to us. They bring the information. Um, we have select board members or member that does our IT and then reports back as you know the pros and cons. These are the four or five systems that we have met with RB and we looked at that. And we've so we've this is not a change. And I, I mean, so much of this that what Sharon proposed, and it's not to take away what Sharon hard work is what we've already agreed to. It's just right. being more formalized. It's being put in writing. And, and I, I think that's good. I think it's how I think the VLCT thing is a good um, addition um, or something we can merge into that and, and merge into our conversation, certainly. Uh, but I see this as not diverting from what we've done historically. It just to, it's an eye, given us a heads up to be more efficient in how we do this and, and be consistent in applying these standards. So in writing is good. Yeah, I wanna give Cliff an opportunity to speak too. He hasn't had a chance. Thanks, John. Um, well, before I say anything, Sharon had her hand up. Maybe she wanted to clarify something. Oh. Yeah, I just wanna clarify that I, I literally started with the VLCT thing and then deepened it here and there. And where we are, this particular item of assigning, you know, thematically, different members of the slate board to take ownership of function areas, if you will, that's, that's a place where I deepen. But, mm -hmm. but John, I started with the whole, the VLCT thing that we adopted two or three, three years ago. It's been three years since we really had a very uh, substantive conversation. So yeah, three years ago, we adopted what, the, what, what I started with. That's it. Okay, thanks. Go ahead, click. Yeah, if, if the intent is to formalize in writing what we currently practice, I'm okay with that. If the idea is, is that um, we're going to have a member of the select board assigned to every one of the committees to sit in on and make sure things are running smoothly and whatnot, I don't think we have the bandwidth to do that. Yeah. And um also, I think the committees would be insulted if we took that tack. Yes, yeah, like micromanaging. Exactly. So if the intent truly is just to formalize in writing you know, what we currently do, then I'm fine with that. Because I agree. I agree with the Claire. opportunity yeah. to, to um, be more efficient in how we, we flush out details on things. Um, acting members of the select board can uh, have a good idea what kind of questions might come up uh, from other members of the select board. Um, there is also, I agree with Denise's point earlier that um, we want to make sure that the opportunity continues to exist for everyone, not just members of the select board, but any interested parties to ask questions that hadn't been asked in the information gathering phase. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, our meetings, our meetings are public and I saw something somewhere that says our meetings are, um, oh, I forget the wording, but anyways, I think people have always appreciated and I've always heard from the public how grateful they are that we engage in a conversation 
with members of the public as well as you know the select board so i don't think that's really important in a small town to make sure that everybody has a chance to be heard um and i think we've done that historically so i think i would not want to see that change what i would want to see change is making sure that the members of the board get to ask their questions and that we have all had that i mean i agree with you denise but but I don't agree with you know people in the, the public raising their hand and participating as though they have us you know essentially have a seat at the table. We should be digesting the issue as a board first and then and then or you know and, and that could include asking somebody in the audience or as a member of the public who we know has expertise to you know respond to the question. Well, but we, we should be, we should have a chance each as board members to ask our questions, seek, seek clarification and more information before we flip it to the public. Yeah, and I think yeah. I think we try to do that most of the time. Then sometimes the conversation, you know, after somebody from the public has spoken, then that leads to more conversation from the board to, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that kind yeah. of thing. So I think I think it's a I think it's a good healthy dialogue and like I said I think people appreciate I've been to other meetings where you know the members of the public the only time they get to speak is maybe at the beginning or the end of the meeting and I won't say where that takes place right now but it is not well received. I, I agree completely on that too and I Sharon I get what, what you're saying too and I think that having that board debate as a priority is is important. And I think, you know, this varies from issue to issue. Sometimes there are things right. that are really, really personal to the public. And so we probably, but maybe that's where we as a board invite them more openly all through the conversation to really, you know, bring that feedback in. What we don't want to do is deny them that voice. They, they have every right to it. And I, frankly, I want to hear it, especially I want to make it hear it before I make any decision. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to you know, I don't, I don't want it to be an afterthought because boy, I've been many times there have, it, I can't count the number of times of, you know, public hearings that I didn't think about what uh, members of the public were saying. You know, they can bring up some really good things sometimes. We just don't have the visibility from their perspective. So I want to respect that. I also, we also don't want the, you know, how we, we have that balancing line of how we impose discipline on that process. So it doesn't, we don't end up in there for a week. You know, that's, right. I get where, you know, so. Yeah, that, that's really, that's really it. Um, and I think my, my point is mostly, Denise, just to be really clear, you know, if people expect a conversation and what they get is, hang on, please, please wait until the members of the board have had a chance to ask their questions. Um, I think it's about being clear so that people aren't surprised about mm -hmm. how we are functioning and how this meeting is going to work. That's really, that's really where I'm coming from is, is wanting to hear from people, but wanting to have a structure that people can predict and rely on so that they're not embarrassed by, you know, thinking, Oh, this is a conversation and I can just interrupt, but no, that's not how it works. Yeah. And some people are, some people will anyway. I was going to say some people will interrupt no. and interject regardless, no matter well, how much. Well, and right. Then, but, yeah. yeah so but, just putting that out there. No, I know. Never but done if that. you've got if you've got board procedures that back you up and say, "I'm so glad you're here. Please wait," that'll that'll help. <laughs> A little bit. Well, I think we just, what we do is you know the idea is that I mean I've been I've you know me, I've spoken up at a million meetings and like this, and it, it can be distracting because it's also the idea is to get the whole central idea of what you're presenting out there in, before you dissect something into pieces, because you lose that continuity of thought. And I like that how you do that. It, it's how we do it as a board. We do that diplomatically because we don't want to alienate the public. You know, they're there for a reason. And if they're standing up and saying something it's usually very important to them so we want to res be respectful of that so yeah, i guess absolutely. the idea is you say look let's let's hear the argument here let the board 
get their head around this. And then we, then we, I mean, that, that would be my, that would be my approach. It's kind of, it, in my experience with working in, with municipalities and a lot of the work, that's, that's what has been most effective because it's respectful. You know, we work for them. We're, we're making decisions for them, but we aren't them. So we have, you know, we, we can't know everything that they know. So it's right. how it's, we get that is how we treat them is important. And, you know, nothing's more frustrating than going to a meeting as a member of the public. And I've been to plenty of them <laughs> and it, you, you feel so disrespected and that what you have to say doesn't matter mm -hmm. um, that I don't want, I don't want us to be that board. And I don't think we are. So I think, nor, yeah, nor are we talking about being. Yeah, right? yeah We're talking agree. about having a clear discipline for how we work together and how we, and how and when we invite public participation. Yeah, so I mean, that, that is clear. Yeah. Um, Clifford John. Go ahead, John. No, I, I don't have any comment. Go ahead, Cliff. Yeah, no. <laughs> Nothing further. Um, you talked about the organizing the structured discussion. I'm trying to recall from reading the document earlier. I think you put that in another section, um, didn't you, Sharon? That the board would have a chance to, to discuss the issue fully before opening the floor up to the public. Right. Mm -hmm. I okay, did. So we'll I deal with that, that when in. we come to it. We'll deal with yeah. that section when we come to it then. Yeah, no, and that, yeah, that's another place. I mean, to go back to a point Cliff made earlier, there are places where in this document that it does go beyond what I would describe as our current practice. I, I think that we have here and there sometimes more than others um, applied some of these practices. And, but my proposal is that we, is that, and I, and putting them in writing as part of this is a way of kind of, again, creating some discipline for ourselves to, to shift and apply those practices more frequently, you know, all the time. Right. <laughs> all the time. <clears throat> Yeah, not not just as you know the occasional one-offs, um, and yeah, to create an awareness and an intention around it that can survive more than a conversation. Like John keeps saying, when you put it in writing, it has much more sense of real, at least for me. Well, it kind of becomes so, a performance standard at that point. So you you're looking, you have you say, how are we? You can look back at it easily and say, how are we doing? At any point, any meeting, you say, wait a minute, we're getting away, we're drifting, so. Right, and I also want to make sure that, you know, we have some flexibility and everything isn't um, mm -hmm. so, so stiff. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. There, we need to, we need to be flexible at the same time. You're right. So we just have to, we have to garner that balance. Mm -hmm. So, so for tonight at 6.30 is... I guess I thought that we would maybe start looking at this document and go through it. And then maybe we can all come back with um, comments and language that we agree with or some suggested changes. Does that make sense to everybody? When you say come back, you mean like at our next meeting, Denise? Yeah. 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 Yep. That makes sense. So okay. we're, so really we're just reviewing tonight. We're not. Yeah. We're I mean, taking, I think we have taking it in. Right, we have to review it as a group, see what we agree with, what we don't, what suggested language we might, any one of us might have to make changes. So the next one is C3. Um, as I recall, that one comes pretty pretty squarely out of the VLCT, but, but that's... Well, you, you added. Okay, you probably have done the comparison, Denise, so I'll let you yep. Um, You added, or the, or the town. Oh, yeah, well, that's a minor ad, isn't it? I don't know, I don't know 
I don't know the reason why it was added. I guess that's why I'm asking. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I could come up with it now. I think just to be, I guess, I mean, the board, I think what I was maybe aware of is that we can't speak for Judy. You know, we can't speak for the cemetery commission. Right. I don't think we do or, or have. I'm not saying that we have. Yeah. Just, just, so I don't, I don't know why we would, I guess I had made that a note as to, we don't really need that, but that's just my thoughts. Okay. So that's three. Anybody else have comments on three? Yeah. Okay. Um, four, five, four and five, I think are what we already had, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> what we already had. Six, um, for some reason it's without and will not is in italics. I don't think I did that, but if I did, I have no idea why. Yeah, I don't know. I don't either. I'd have to go back and look at the original one. Um, so seven, eight, and nine, so I didn't see any changes there. Did you make any changes there, Sharon? I might have added that the rules have to be readopted annually. I can't remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I think, um, that, I think that's a good practice. I think that's, I think that's I think that's the carryover language. I seem to recall that. Yeah. Okay. I think that's that's pretty standard from anywhere I've ever been too. Yeah. So we, you know, that it's a reminder too, if nothing else. But it's also an opportunity to address problems that you've got that you've run into over the past year. So it is a living document. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it could be amended even throughout the year if there's a need. Sure. Something comes up. But the um, so seven, eight, nine. I don't see any change there. Cliff, did you do a side by side too? Did you come up with anything that's different? In this section, I think it was all the same. I did, I did do an analysis of the general rules that we previously had, but I don't have that in front of me. Okay. Uh, but as I recall, these are part and parcel from what we had in there before. Yeah. In. Yeah. Okay. Agendas. This is somewhat, this is somewhat revised. Yeah. I, yeah. I, um, you know, and over the over the years, on and off, we've tried having um, <clears throat> items on the agenda have you know a time limit. Sometimes that works, and sometimes it just doesn't because it's an issue that board members or the public are very passionate about. So, without knowing sometimes how much time somebody thinks needs to be allotted to an agenda item, I take a, I just take a guess. No, I think that's good. Yeah. Um, and I think, um, you know, going back to the, the conversation that we were having a few minutes ago about by having, having a point person who's, you know, working with somebody um, who has an agenda item. And, it, and so, so I'm going to tie together a couple of points that have been made. So I don't, I don't think that if we appointed somebody to be um, a liaison to the conservation committee, I don't, in my mind, that doesn't mean that that person has to go to every meeting. It, it just means that if Stephanie has an agenda item coming up, she might connect with whoever her liaison is and say, hey, I really want to come to the board to talk about blah, blah. And then, and then you just, you know, you have that dialogue say, Stephanie, what's the ask? So that, so that offline, each of us is able to kind of coach, if you will, 
um, say, we got to make sure we know what the ask is, um, what materials do you have? And then you can dialogue with poor Stephanie. I'm picking her, but it could be anybody um, and say, how much time do we think this is going to take? Um, and Stephanie might say, well, I'm just going to present a question and the board can, it'll take five minutes. And one of us will be like, no, this is going to take half an hour. Yeah. And, and so we can say, Denise, this is a half hour item. And I've worked with Stephanie to get it down as tight as I think it can go. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that that's, would be really helpful. Right. It would be really helpful. And, and, and like yeah. said earlier, we can like be like, no, people are going to want to know these three things. Let's, let's bandy this around. And then you digest really here, you know, and you guys have seen me ask for this in emails before. What specifically is the ask? If you were, if you got to make the motion and have the board say, I, in five minutes, what is the motion that you're looking for? And then you backfill with materials and, and information to support it. Um, so, yeah, so, so Denise, you're absolutely right. But I think we can, I think we can get so much better at this if we actually kind of focus ourselves on getting better at it. Yeah, I, I agree with both of you on that, that. This, if we do this right, it can really make, you know, make for efficient use of time and make these a lot more productive. I think that, and I agree with Cliff and what you said earlier, this doesn't mean we be at every, you know, commission meeting, cemetery commission meeting or fire department meeting. The idea is that you're the, you are kind of primary contact and you're really, you know, really in that, that first connection loop for that. <coughs> And then we vet and get that information organized. And if there's a need or if there's a problem or whatever it is, we make sure before it hits this select board that it's ready for that discussion. I mean, I like that. That really cleans up these meetings, you know, so we can mm -hmm. actually address the agendas that we've got. And then nobody would get an email from me saying, what are you asking for? I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and to kind of further this 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 methodology, if you will, um, if 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 Rick is the or Cliff is the liaison to the highway department, right? He's the mm -hmm. one who chose to be the liaison to the highway department. Um, if I get a phone call from any particular townsperson, complainant, or someone who's happy, or someone who has an idea. Um, or a project or something, some a need. Um, I I can listen because all of us are independently elected and have mm -hmm. people's authority. Absolutely. We got to remember that. We got to remember that. Absolutely. We're not delegating down our authority. We're right. just trying to kind of make this a, a more efficient, more effective select board, um, and more helpful select board to the people we represent. So, uh, let's say. Katie Carnes calls me up and says, hey, I got a concern with the, a tree bough that's really low or a leaning tree over the road. I'm afraid it's gonna fall on my car every time I drive under it. Um, and you know, what, what do you think? I would say, that's a concern of mine too. I share that with you, um, but I'm not the point person on the highway. I'm gonna follow up with an email to Cliff. Yep. I would really, before we get too far down this path, be better, better use of your time, Katie, to call Cliff. And he's the guy who works directly with the road commissioner. And, and that would be a more efficient way to go about it. Of course, you know, I, now that Katie called me at the next select board meeting, if someone forgot, I'd say, Oh, how did that go? And, you know, uh, Cliff or Alfred would say, well, this is what's going on. So that, and I think that's what we used to do. We used to have Cy Lamberton, be the liaison to the highway department. That's how we did it. We kind of got off track from that because we have a, an employee part-time acting in that capacity to some degree, but it's not really a liaison from the select board. So, um, but that's kind of my thing. Can I, can I say something on that? I partially agree with that, but I also think what we do is we don't push them to, the, to that person's calling us because they know us or they know they're familiar. I would say what we do situation like that on a tree we email you know we we go right to alfred and toby and write 
to that. If I'm the representative on transportation, then I'm copied on that too. And I would pipe right into that. But the idea is to get it where it needs to go. We are all elected and we're all you're trying to address their needs. So we don't have to create a bureaucratic ladder for things to go through. You know, that just, that's clearly one of those things. It just needs to go to the road foreman. It needs to go to the, you know, to the road commissioner. And then obviously, you know, whoever the transportation person is, they, if it turns into a bigger issue, that's where it, you know, they, that can then come back to the board through them. That way you're actually just addressing it right at the root. You know, we aren't, we aren't just kind of creating a response ladder. I mean, I think we can, does that make sense to you? You know, I. Rick, if, if I can chime in, I, and I'm not trying to make it bureaucratic and everyone's got to go zigzagging around. What I'm trying to do is to not have any one person be the go-to for everything. If someone feels more comfortable, maybe someone just loves Rick and he, and he thinks Rick can do everything for him. And by the way, there are people that come to me about everything because they yeah. want me to do everything for them. And I don't like that. Um, I'm not, that's not my job. I'm one person here. And I want the people in the town to understand that there are different love, there are people with different assignments on this board. So they don't funnel anything to one person. And I don't want everything, frankly, funneled to the chair. And I want okay. the chair to, to be able to say, I run the meetings, I set the agenda. And by the way, my assignments are these primarily. I'm willing to listen to you, but Rick Keene or Cliff Emmons, they're, they're the transportation and highway liaisons. And so, you know, I'm interested. I'll make sure I circle back to them, but it's, it's a better use of your time and my time. Um, and it's, but then that educates the people in town. So they're like, oh, I'm going to call Denise tonight. I'm pissed off at that. You know, what happened? That highway truck with the plow hitting my tree. Um, and, and then somebody else would say, oh, well, you know, I called her last time. She said that she's not the right person. It's really Cliff. So um, that's what I want the, the town's folks to also get educated as to not just point everything to one person. I want to spread, spread the pain. And I think we, oh, I'm sorry, Sharon, go ahead. Well, I just, I, I want to knit together what Rick and John are saying. What I would suggest to, and go back to what Denise said earlier, how we take good care of people when they make a phone call to me, John, Rick, whomever, absolutely. You hear them, you say, thank you. You acknowledge, you listen. And then you say, and I would say, because you got the call, you take ownership. Don't send, don't make the, don't make people call all over the place. You say, You're John says, you. thank you so much for calling me. I totally hear you. Oh, makes me mad too. Um, what I'm going to do, you'll see is, is I'm not the, I'm not the point person. I'm kind of not the lead on the board on this kind of issue. Rick is. So I'm going to let him know that you and I spoke and I will copy you on an email that I said to Rick. So it's like a really warm, supportive handover yeah. to, to Rick. I like this, Sharon. That, you know, after you're hearing, hearing you and John speak, I really spoke to me well too i think there's also i really like the idea of training the public too to look at the board as a board you know and not i think they you know it is a collection of people that, that have responsibilities so and yeah i'm i i stand corrected i'd say i i i don't you know i don't think you stand corrected rick i think the idea that we're responsive to people that call us is important mm -hmm. and and i will still you know I always get tons of, you know, tons, but various different phone calls or whatever. And I, you know, sometimes I refer them to Judy or to Alfred or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I think as elected officials, people are going to call who they know, who they're comfortable with. So mm -hmm. I don't think there's a correction needed. I think that's just the way, that's just the way people work. That's just how yeah. people are. And some people are going to keep doing that and others will be very open and say, oh, I called Rick and he was really nice. But John was the one who really, you know, engaged with me on that issue. And, you right. know, people are going to react, react differently, but nobody's going to be mad. They're not going to be mad. They're going to feel like you heard them and you supported mm -hmm. them and they'll get it. Yeah, it's, it's about helping them out, you know, addressing what they're. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Yeah, that sounds that sounds very good.
Roger's having dog dog behavior issues. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. So it sounds like we're, you know, we're looking, we come at it from however we come at it based on our personalities, but I think it sounds like we're all on the same page in the end result. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think so. I do too. I think it's great. Um, okay. Now we're on agenda two. Cliff, did you, you hadn't commented on this. Did you want to? Yeah, in a sec. Hey, Gail Graham, yeah, uh, Gail Graham disappeared, right? Gail dropped out. Yep. She may come back in. Um, or she was having an internet problem. I'm not sure. At any rate, uh, yeah, I, I think the direction that the conversation is, has gone is um, a good approach to this. It, yeah, people are going to call who they're going to call. We can take that tact of gently educating them um, about how we have organized the board. Um, and some people will get that and other people will continue to call whoever they're used to calling. Right. Uh, and that's as it should be, because it's very important that we maintain open lines of communication and people have to feel that they can go to whatever line they're most comfortable using. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Number agendas two. Um, and I'm trying to get used to Sharon's new language, this, this ask language. Oh, I didn't make that up, but thank you for giving me credit for it. <laughs> Who made it up? I don't know. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times people would look at me and say, what is the ask? What, oh, is, I guess I, ask? what is your ask? All right. I'm not used to that. So that's why it was like, oh, this is new. Um, okay. Um, um, so let me let me just clarify on this for my own, since I'm not used to dealing with this board. So when we we ask to have something or put on an agenda, I mean we're providing the background brown the background material to the chair at that point, or what, or is this to ever? I mean, where who what background brown materials are we looking at? And I mean, who is that? Is that just to get it on the agenda, or is that for the agenda? Assuming it's going it, to I think it can work both ways. Um, you know, we have Google folders set up. Mm -hmm. um, and I would expect that each board member would be responsible in reviewing the Google for, folder, you know, mm -hmm. several days or the day before or something of a meeting to see what items are in there. Oftentimes, um, I'll forward... Um, items to Katie and ask her to put them in the folder, but anybody can forward her an item and say, could you please put this in the folder for such and such a meeting? Um, the only thing I'm going to need to know is about the agenda and how much time it might take. We can put things in the folder too. Yes. And so, and so that'll save actually, Denise, that'll save your email suite that you have to do now to see is everything in there. Um, it's, you know, we can put things in the folder, and then, well, you, and then and then on Sunday Sunday morning or afternoon when I'm you know going in to see what's there, it's actually there. Well, the question is, do you need a gatekeeper there for the folder? So because the agenda, the item has to get on the agenda before it goes in the folder, correct? Right. So I mean, you kind of want to funnel those items through Katie or somebody to make sure that we're even going to be talking about it. Otherwise, that can get very cluttered with things that. Or may or may not be on the agenda. Am I wrong in that or is that? No, I mean, you're sort of, I see what you're saying. So, you know, if you happen to put something in a folder and it's not ready for the agenda for this particular Monday night, you know, we can always move it. But I'm assuming that, you know, I would like agenda items by the Thursday prior to a select board meeting. And that's, that you're would be really, that. That would be really that. helpful to you're have. You need that. Right, so we can yeah. put agenda yeah. items on, know how much time it might take. And, you know, you might send me an email, say, could you put this on? I think it might take 15 minutes, but 
it might be an agenda item where we get a lot of public input. So, you know, maybe it's going to take longer. Um, and if it's something that there's a time limit on, which a lot of times <clears throat> we get items mm -hmm. at the last minute. Sure, time sensitive, yeah. And sometimes it just, sometimes it just can't be avoided. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can. If people are paying attention and doing what they're supposed to be doing, it can be avoided. But sometimes it just can't, and I get that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, some, it's just the nature of the beast, and that's where I go back to we have to be somewhat flexible. We can't be, you know, so rigid. Yeah, yeah. In what we do. There also, we're, we're dealing with people. There also are times when people ask for an item on the agenda, and it turns out there is, it's, it is, um, it doesn't have to be Monday night, you know, and and it just takes somebody saying, you know, and again, to me, that would be the like the liaison person, like, what is this, and when do you need it, and and. Or it's either, you know, they learning, oh, is there's it's not a big price. It doesn't have to be Monday night. Or also um, in a conversation with the person who's asking, I'm, and I'm sort of thinking somebody outside of the board, um, it's really not ready. There's the, You are really not going to get a decision on Monday night from the board with, with the level of, of information that's there now. So I really want to help you deepen that so that I can pretty much promise you that that the next meeting the board will be ready to digest it and and what i can give it and, and then you know rick could say on monday night i'm going to give them a heads up i'm going to give them a heads up that this issue is coming so everybody can say oh heard about that never heard about that really interested rick will you fill me in before the next meeting whatever yeah because i mean some people are going to be okay with that and some people are going to be no i want to talk to the full board and i want them to hear from me so then we have to, and then that's one of those kind of flexibility kind of things that we have to have. You know, if you've got somebody really strident that, no, I want the board to hear from me. Um, you know, and like, again, I go back to, we represent the, the people. So we have to be a little flexible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is um, six minutes to seven and we are, um at i think number d4 yeah is that where you're at okay mm -hmm. and again i have started again trying to keep a list i did that for quite a while and i didn't think anybody seemed to pay attention to it um but i've started keeping a list again for future agenda items that's something we all need to do better at. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I did. I did my part this week. Do we? You know, one. Oh, never mind. I was going to say that. Well, and, and once we have, once we have done our, we're not obviously not going to get to it tonight. But once we've done our, okay, what are the kind of the the categories of issues, and we've kind of delegated things to each other, to ourselves, to people then that'll that'll be a natural you got to step mm -hmm. up and get engaged in the future agenda items because you own some of them mm -hmm. right and it's been my experience that sometimes people say they're going to do something and then they don't every single one of us is guilty of that. yeah we've all had that well i just usually in most of the meetings you know we at the very end we always there's always an item you know it's future agenda items and then it's actually in the minutes and <laughs> You know, that can, Katie can post it to a list right there, or not that we only come up with future agenda agenda items in a meeting, but it's a good place to just ask okay. a question. And so I don't know if we want to. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Denise, going through, I mean, when we, not right now, we've got, so we, we got pieces to put in place, but when we're really rocking and rolling and, and very, you know, doing doing this really well, you'll have a list of agenda items. Well, all, future agenda items, we'll all have that list. We'll all see the dates. Like yeah. this, this is queued up for the next meeting. And Denise, that's a great chance for you to look at Rick and say, Rick, you're going to be ready. Sharon, you're going to be ready. I know you, you turn things in at the last minute. Don't do that. Like we, we can actually create that conversation well, with each other. 
Well, we could almost create, I mean, doing that list, I mean, you can, you can actually almost calendar some of it from it. I mean, it really becomes, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I love this idea. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and you'll yeah. notice the last several agendas, there's been a list mm -hmm. of items and our agenda fills up pretty quickly. Sure. And yeah. I would like to take, have a chance at the end of meetings to review that list and see you know, is this really going to be ready for this meeting? And then I can make a note by it and say, okay, Sharon said she'd have it ready. Counting on her. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so the only thing I had on this number five with posting locations, um, we don't, these Calis store isn't open just yet. Um, so we've been posting at the East Callis post office. So I think that should just get changed. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the only comment I had on that. Um, that's no big deal to change that. Um, what are we on? We're on number D, D6. Six. Um, this is where it talks about agenda items. Yeah, I, I didn't make mm -hmm. any changes on that section at all. So obviously that's been out there all along that we don't change the order and yet we do it all the time. Well, and sometimes it just, if everybody kind of agreed at the beginning of a meeting, mm -hmm. you know, that's, and then, and that, and I go back to, this is, we have to have some flexibility always and not be rigid. Okay, meetings, E. Probably, I think by the time we get through E1. Not, we may not even get through this one. Maybe we should use the next two minutes to just take a uh, can I break. Can I chime in on the changing of the agenda item order? Sure. Um, I, I, I agree with Denise. We need to be flexible. Yeah. If we're warning something for a vote, I think we need to stay in order. And, and we should try to ascribe like a vote. We should try to maybe not the order, but we should put a time like 7.30, we're gonna vote on the purchase of, I don't know, Muddy Pond, you know, 50 acre Muddy Pond parcel by the conservation, proposed by the Conservation Commission. That, that shouldn't just be on the agenda if we're gonna allow us ourselves to move things around, which I think I agree with Denise, we should, in order to be effective and efficient when someone's sitting in our room, we need to be able to move things around. But I think on, on items where we, it requires a vote, like a, on a critical policy matter or a critical expenditure, that should have a time. And maybe we just always have those items at eight o'clock. And, and then we start, and then, you know, whether we get through the front part of our agenda, we go to that and, okay, we're at the eight o'clock vote section and we go through that and then people know to show up and then they can weigh in, and that way that informs our vote. I like that, uh, John. Move an agenda item, and then someone shows up thinking, oh, that's at the end, but you know, the person who is gonna, who's lobbying us for the vote says, I got, you know, I gotta go to another meeting, and we move everything to the front, and then the, and we have the vote, and the public is like, whoa, wait a minute here. So anyway, so you I, I will, I will offer, and, and actually, John, I'm glad you paused us on that because I hope, I hope that when we leave and adopt this document, whenever we adopt it, that it, it reflects things that we actually in, are, intend to be doing. So, so mm -hmm. I think that we, I've heard that we really need two changes on this paragraph, and I am volunteering to make them or draft language for us that, in fact, we want the flexibility to reorder the agenda upon agreement at the beginning of the meeting, because that's what we do. So we should have that in here. Um, and the only question I have is whether that's allowed under the statutes, but I think that it is, and I will double check that. And then the other thing is John's idea of votes, um, votes being, any, anything we're gonna vote on being scheduled at a specific time and I will try to draft that in it as well. And I think that John, we can, we can say something like I just said, and still as a practical matter, decide that all votes are gonna be at eight o'clock without violating what, 
the possibility that some are at 7.30 and some are at 8.45. So, so let me ask a question. So if we, we have a discussion on an, an item that's on the on an, an agenda and we know we need to take a vote on it, we would discuss it and take a vote later? Well, or, or if you schedule the vote for 7.45, that's when we take the vote. It's kind of, I mean... I think I think this is something we're going to have to play around with and see yeah, how, I think, how yeah. we do with it. But it's worth trying. It's worth yeah, investigating. I, let me, I, let, I, me take a, let me take a stab at some language. Yeah, I, I think uh, my my point is I don't mean on everything that we vote on, like I ex we accept the orders. But you know, um, I mean things of policy or monetary consequence, budgetary consequence. And maybe budget of a certain magnitude, even. Yeah. Right, where, where people might be really interested in participating. Yeah, I get it. This is kind of that. And we may screw up, Rick. We may say, oh, yeah. who cares about that? And we get our heads handed to us. And that's we should expect that. And right. that's it has to be the first time. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's well, one thing. It's not on everything. Okay, so it's, it's after seven. So you'll send us some language, Sharon? I'm going to play around with language in that particular one. Um, yeah, because that's going to be, yeah, that I'll, I'll noodle on that. I'm going to excuse myself for a couple minutes. Does everybody want to take a five-second water break? Oh, okay, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I'd like to go get my, my water replenished. Hi, Rose. What's for supper? I, I just finished eating so that I could come in here for seven. Okay. So please go take a break. Yeah, we're just going to fill our water bottles. Be right back. Okay. There's a big pot of homemade pad thai waiting for me to eat after our meeting. <laughs> well, I hope they leave you some. I do too. In my in, around this house, that may not have. I may be, I may just be eating the pot lid. <laughs> Hello, Gail. I just I'm trying to get back in here. Hmm. There I am. Hi, Rick. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are uh, you? Hi, Gail. Hi, Happy Gail. spring. So I'm hoping that um, we may not be doing, we had agreed some time ago to have Sandra give us her treasurer delinquent tax report updates at the last meeting of every month. So I don't know, she got the agenda. So I don't know if she's in the, is she in the waiting room at all, Cliff? She is not, oh wait, she just popped in. Okay. And Toby's there as well. Excellent. All right, there's Miss Sandra. Look at that beautiful flower behind you. It looks like it's going to eat you. Well, Audio is not connected yet, Sandra. Hang on a sec. Hi, Rose. Hi, Sandra. Yeah, Hi. Got audio, Sandra. Am I here? Sandra, Sandra's Oops. got the, the, the woman eating plant behind her. That's my artichoke. I see that. Huh. Wow. <laughs> I All right, is everybody, is everybody back? I'm getting a drink of water. Um, Cliff, can you call up 
the treasurer's report, please? Sure. Well, we went fast today. Yep, we're right on schedule. Nice. Oh, there it is. And Sandra does a beautiful job giving us memos to read ahead of time, we'll see if we have any questions. Um, so thank you for that, it's very helpful. So it's all yours, Miss Sandra, take it away. So we, I still have a, the bottom line is we are in great shape. Um, Mo everything is on track, both in the general government side and the highway side. Again, um, in a municipal situation, for those of you who are, are joining in, our budget does not get spent equally uh, every month. So there are a number of um, first, um, a number of expenditures that are made primarily in the beginning of the fiscal year, which do skew the uh, percentages spent at any particular time. So we're in great shape of note, we did receive the George Road grant reimbursement. Now we received that in March, you won't see that on this report, but that came in at uh, roughly $130,000. So highway is also in great shape. Uh, the primary uh, source, of outstanding revenues is uh, our delinquent taxes. And they are really coming in nicely, I'm happy to say. We are, let's see, down to about $63,000. And um, I expect another several thousand to come in before the end of this month. So we're doing very well. Are there any, that's, that's the report really, but I don't have any, um, at this point, it, it looks good. Any questions? Does that, does that, uh, what is that delinquent tax rate at this point look like compared to other years? Is it higher, you know, given the COVID situation or is this fairly typical at this point? Well, you know, Rick, that's a great question. And we are doing better this year than we have in past years at this point in time. Wow, um, that's, that's impressive. It's, it's counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. We, uh, at the close of the tax effort this year, we had $15,000 less in delinquent taxes than we did in prior than we did wow. in the year before. Interesting. So it is interesting. Stimulus checks. Um, perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> Any other questions? Not on that. Up next. I, I thought Sharon had her hand up at one point. Oh, I didn't see it. Sorry. I did. But Rick asked the question I was going to ask, and Sandra answered it, so I took my hand down. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So we are we're doing very well. Our grant reimbursements are coming in, as well as um, reimbursements to uh, for election spent expenditures. We just received the last reimbursement from the Secretary of State's office. So. Again, um, you're not going to see that in the February report. That that will that came in in March as well. So we're doing good. Great. All Same right. Place. Well, I thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody have any anything else of interest to update us on with that, Sandra? I just want to <laughs> underscore the comment Denise made at the beginning, Sandra. Thank you for the preparing us so well for yeah. our connections with you. Good, thank you. Well, if you can, if there's more I can do, or if you need to see it differently, let me know, but this seems to be working. Yep. And yeah. I reminded everybody that we kind of decided sometime last year to have you on at the end of 
the last meeting of every month to kind of do an update, it seems to work out better than trying to do it at the beginning of the month. Well, I've done some changes with our uh, checking accounts and how I'm able to get statements. Uh, so you will get your report very early in the month within the first seven days. That will give you plenty of time to review it until we get to uh, the last meeting of the month. And also to shoot me any questions in between then and the last meeting of the month. Yep. Very you, good. You know, Sandra, can I ask one more thing before you go? And that yes, is, Rick. you know, just, okay. you know, looking ahead, are there, are there problem places kind of in the calendar year that you, or things that you would recommend where we, I need to pay, pay attention, particular attention to things that are happening in that, I mean, they kind of happen on a calendared basis, if you know what I mean. I do. Well, you know, um, Callus is in a remarkably good position right now, Rick. We opened this fiscal year with a general fund balance of approximately $370,000. It wasn't long ago that Callus had a deficit uh, close to $300,000, and the select board has worked really hard to um, to work on that and to maintain a fund balance. So at this point in time, we are, and I knock, I'm knocking on wood, maybe yeah. here is the better place. Um, we are pretty much able to manage all of our cash flow, which really has to do with highway expenditures in the summer. So our fiscal year ends June 30th, right? And um, we don't start to collect taxes until September. So during that period of time, we have a number of highway projects and often other grant projects that in addition to our monthly expenditures that we've budgeted for, that um, our fund balance manages to cover. So for right now, as long as we maintain a fund balance at that level, which is a level recommended by our accounting firm, Sullivan and Powers, we are um, very stable and, and we we're able to do what we want to do. And Sullivan and Powers recommended that we have a fund balance to carry us over so the, and this and this also saves us from having to take out a loan in interest yeah, borrowing. taxes and not have to pay interest. So we save the town money in that way too. Yeah, there was I kind of inferred that was in, yeah, I conferred that from the what she said. That sounds great. So we do chew into that fund balance into that instead of instead of borrowing right, short term right. loans in, in lieu of tax receipts. Right. Yeah. And that saves the town money. You know, we don't have yeah. to pay interest. That is yeah. So we've gotten ourselves, you know, in a really good place. Yeah. Thanks to the thanks to Sandra and the select board for their due diligence. Okay. Um, is that it? So we can move on to Toby. I see Toby's I see Toby's vehicle stuck in the mud. Not my car. <laughs> and, not, not, and not Callis Roads, right, Toby? Oh yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> as, of, as of today. It looks like Middlesex. <laughs> no, that's Kent Hill Road. Today? Oh, wow. No, not today. Oh. Okay, Toby. Well, I'm going to leave you folks. All right. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. You're welcome. Have a good night. Bye, Sandra. Bye now. So, Toby, you had sent us some documents ahead of time, and Sharon and I. I think both asked similar questions. Um, so if you could just give us a give us a run through. Um, capital plan and schedule of indebtedness. Cliff, are you able to call those up, please? Yeah, hang on a sec. Okay, everybody should be able to see that. Um, so this is just a look at 
the um, capital plan with all the new stuff that we've talked about, um, the one addition is looking at buying, replacing the great one of the graders um, in a couple of years. Uh, that's really the only change that's in there. The other thing that you'll notice is there are we have extended warranty on the four trucks that we use all the time and the dates are there. So it reminds you when you need to replace those trucks before they, um, the extended warranty expires. Mm. Toby, Toby which, which column is the date? Like the date, we know when it, uh, I'm sorry, spoon, spoon feed me this. When, how do I know when the truck is, is so each truck, is, each truck is listed on a line. It says Western Star 10 wheel. And mm -hmm. then the expiration date is in parentheses. Oh, okay. Thank you. And then, so for instance, Toby, on that one, you're looking, we're going to be paying it off or have paid it off. And you're looking to budget 39,000 in FY23 and 24 for the replacement. Is that it? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions on that? What, wait, let's go back to building on your question, Denise. So 39,000 to replace for FY 23, 24 to replace the Western star and the replacement cost is 195. So what we're seeing is 39,000 is kind of the begin beginning of chipping away at the 195. That's correct. Okay. Because so would that be the actual year we we, we we replace it, or is that planning and saving in our little savings account to replace it? Because there's three. So that that would be the first year you would have to make a payment on a new truck. Because we're looking at three different payments then in FY twenty three twenty four. That's correct. Plus a greater actually, payment. Well, you're actually looking at six payments. Well, yeah, assuming we get a, a new spare truck, which I know Alfred is looking for. Right. Seven, right? Seven? No, six. Oh, six, you're right. Yep, ten. Because we're looking at 60,000 for a used grader. No, we're looking at a new grader. Oh, we are? Yep. The, cur the current one is used. Oh, that's what that means, mm -hmm. okay. So do we, I have a question in here. So we have off years where we're not paying. I mean, do we just want to, even that we've got these service year lives that we're, we're doing automatic retirement, say on the Western Star 10 wheeler. That's on a seven year service life. And that's that's a good projected life for that. We, we don't distribute that cost over all those seven years. I mean, that for budgeting purposes, just to have an even line item. Right. So, so you can, you can only go five years on financing for town vehicles unless you go to the voters. So you can do all of this oh. yourselves and put it in your budget without having to ask the voters to approve. If you go I got six you. years, I then you have, six years, then you have to bond it. I understand. I was just thinking if, if it was not so much a bond, if you were capital funding for it, you know, we're just annually saving and then we have enough well, you, can put more, you can put more money in than you owe each year if you want to build up a reserve fund but that's up to you i mean right now we're looking at you know next year you should have had 104,000 and you only put 62 in and the year following that you're going to have to put in 175,000 which is 75,000 more right. than you should have put in this year well i'm always a big advocate of annualized reserve funds i mean they that's your most efficient and the least costly way to budget this equipment replacement, you know, and then you're, plus you're gaining interest on the money. So you're, you know, that, I don't know the, rest, the way the rest of the board feels. I guess that'll be a discussion for a later day, but. So, and again, these, these are just plan numbers. They're not actual numbers. The only actual numbers are the 2021, which are essentially what mm -hmm. we owe right now. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we're going to trade some trucks in, so the actual purchase price may be less by 20000 but there's no way to know that. So these numbers reflect the worst case scenario. If you didn't have anything to trade in, this is what you would expect to have as a liability for um, lease and or loan payments. Sure, I get that. Yeah, yeah. So it's, just, 
Toby. It's just a map to show you show you what the range of cost is going to be if that's and again, the most important thing is the date that the seven year um, extended warranty ends that you have to plan for. That's the driving <laughs> factor because we've already had an experience where we went 30 days past the, ex the extended warranty and we blew a motor and it cost us $15,000. Yeah. So you need, you need to look at those ex expiration dates as a wall not to go over because you take a huge liability if anything fails on the truck at that point. Absolutely. Uh, those, John those has a are, question. I, I just, well, I, I'm looking at replacement cost on the two graders. One's 300, one's 100. I don't, can you clarify what this means? Yeah, it means that we will eventually, that we would hope to buy a brand new grader as opposed to a used one. Then what's the other 100,000 one? That would be another, you know, another used replacement so you're looking to buy purchase down the road a new replacement and then a good quality used one that's correct like both of these correct i just want to point out and I, i'm not this is not a disagreement with annualizing i just want to point <coughs> out that I, I just don't want i i agree with the budget planning process and i think this is good and healthy i just don't want to create momentum and I, I understand the, the insurance running out puts us in a bad state, but I, it, we should also look at what it would cost to extend an insurance plan for a year or two if we get in a financial pinch. I, I just worry that if we keep putting money in the bank, we feel the need to spend it, you know? You, you, got, mean, you mean warranty, John, right? Well, no, I'm, I'm talking about two Extending things. Extending warranties. I'm talking about the warranty running out, forcing us to buy another one rather than us simply extending the warranty. Hey, do it a look around, have the mechanic check it out and say, you know, this girl's got another two years in it. Or maybe that's a bad idea because maybe we're at that critical junction where the value drops so precipitously we take, we take a beating. But I, I just oh. would want all that weighed out so I, when I vote to buy a new truck, if that's how it comes down, that I know we've its truck really needs to be replaced, not just because this is our rhythm and because we got the money and or because, you, wow, this thing runs great. And we, we think this thing's going to go another 150,000 miles. But, you know, the warranty ran out. Well, maybe we can extend that warranty for five grand and that'll stave off. We get another year out of it. Um, so I, I just want, I want, you know, junctures. I want opportunities to consider other options rather than constantly buying trucks, no matter where we are financially as a town, because there are other things outside of the highway budget and even things that beyond our control, like school taxes, uh, recessions, pandemics, towns getting older, stuff like that. Um, I just want us, and I also want us to take another look. We bought these big trucks. Our trucks are bigger than they've ever been. And we were sold on the idea to do this. And I'm still sold on this idea right now um, that we got bigger trucks. So there's less return runs to pick up material. But I've heard, and we <coughs> have a lot of concern that these trucks are getting bigger and it's pressing us to, to widen our roads. This is a concern across town. And I don't know if that's true or not, but it's, um, and people are concerned about that and they're concerned about damage, uh, increased damage to trees by the wider trucks and the wings and stuff hitting they're them. Not wider. I just wanna put all that, that's what's going through they're my tiny wider. mind. Let, let Alfred respond to that because he knows what he's going to tell you. <clears throat> so Rick had, his, Rick had his hand up first. Go ahead, Rick. Anyway, well, I, ahead, I mean, I, I was just going to speak to this, John, a little bit. You know, I worked with all the like 30 municipalities on this in the past. And, you, you know, retirement life for things like plow trucks, dump trucks is five to seven years. And for a reason, there is the cost benefit of downtime, lost manpower, maintenance on it when things are down, 
and then the cost of the fix overrides and then the lost trade in value. All those add up to giving you a negative return on value. I mean, I actually think these numbers look really good. And I know it's hard to predict because you don't know. What we do know is that these trees, trucks, even our, you know, our big dumps are taking quite a beating with plow frames on them and everything. So they are, there's, they become decrepit in a hurry. I mean, I think Alfred would back that up and just about any road foreman around the town. So if you get, I, you know, if you can extend those warranties affordably, you're maybe you're get a year or two, but I think <laughs> that those warranties are built around failure. Let me tell you, they don't like to lose money on extended warranties. So, you know, they tend to be at the edge and it, you know, so that's, that's a, there's a lot of people look into this across the state and across the country. That's why they have these retirement cycles. Rick, Rick, um, you can't generalize a gravel road town <coughs> to Chicago or Burlington where they're Not. just, every road is salt. Um, I'm talking about Addison County and gravel roads. That, most roads in Vermont are, are just, gravel. I'm just saying that you said across yeah. country. Um, the other the other thing is, and I've lost my trend of thought on this, um, and I apologize. Um, let me come back to it. Okay. Um, it's almost 7.30. I know Alfred wants to speak. Yeah. Does, does the oh, board oh, have any? Before I forget, I got it. Okay, go ahead. It was pointed out that we ran a truck beyond warranty and we took a licking. The reason that truck failed after a warranty was it had an inherent defect, a severely inherent, a severe defect. It was so severe that they stopped making that truck and nobody wants it. And we were lucky to get rid of it with a new motor. If that were a Freightliner truck with a new motor, they would have been lining up at the door, but it was that model year, the 2012, international junk box that is anyone looks on the internet and it's 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 the Edsel of plow trucks um but john let me let me just out. so i just don't want to, that to be used as the poster child for why now we got to always buy new trucks and i and, and i just want to know rick you may be 120 percent right on the timing and all this i just i've only heard anecdote i've not ever heard I've not heard, I've not, I've heard anecdote on the, what it costs for an additional year of insurance. If it's huge then, and it makes no sense economically for a town, then we obviously don't do that, but I want to see that. If, um, you know, a truck it clearly isn't going to, is in bad shape and we should, it makes sense to get rid of it. I want to know that. I want to see that. If the trade in price drops precipitously, more than the, the normal trend line, if it suddenly does a, a massive dip after the magic year of seven, I want to see that. And then I, that'll make me, it'll easily, that will result in me it being an easy vote. For me. I just don't like anecdote and making decisions on anecdote. And I've been on this board long enough that I found that anecdote is as much wrong as it is right. And I've made a lot of bad decisions on this board, trusting anecdote. And at the end of the day, when it goes bad, where the buck stops here. And I want to make sure that everything I do is based on facts and figures. That's it. Okay. So um, can, I, can I jump in here just for just a minute? minute, just a minute, Alfred, I just want to put it out there that it's seven 30. Um, we are only got through looking at the first document that Toby wanted to present. So Alfred, if you have a quick relevant oh, yeah. comment that's gonna, you know. Well, normally when I speak, it's relevant, Denise. But anyways, um, to, the, to the warranty that you refer to, John, we buy the biggest warranty that you can. We buy the extended seven year warranty. So you can't buy a 10 year warranty or an eight year warranty we buy the, the longest life warranty that you possibly can buy. So when that warranty is gone, it's best to see that the truck is gonna go because then now you're not covered for the big expenses. 
I, I think that's that's a fact that you need to know. The, the, the warranty, we already buy the longest term warranty that is available. So there are no extension plans outside no. of the dealer plan? There's nothing no. out there in the world? Um, I, I can pull well, up your gonna, machine and see what happens. So I wonder if we should I know that. That's what I'm talking about, Alfred. That may be a fact, and, I, and I'm not discounting what you're saying, but I want to know that that is a fact. I want to know that we have looked out there and all you'll ever get is a seven year warranty or if you try and, and or I found a way to extend that, but um, what it costs the four. It costs such a crazy amount that right. it makes sense. I just want to see that and I'm happy to to move forward. I just don't yeah. want an anecdote anymore. I'm so I think right. that's well, a we, have, we have looked at that and and it is very expensive when you try to buy a warranty beyond the seven year mark. Right, right. So show me the number. That's all. <clears throat> okay. Show so me the expensive. I, I want if it, I, if, I have no problem showing you that number okay. when it comes time to buy a vehicle. I will okay. certainly do that. Okay. So, Perfect. We're not there today. We're just looking at a capital. No, I know. I know. I'm just Okay, so can, can we yeah. move I John, you make all really good points, but in order to move the agenda items along, maybe we need to schedule a time to have further discussion on this. Um, Sharon, you had your hand up? Uh, yes, two things. One, I think this is just an FYI. So all good points, but we don't have to hash this out tonight, right? This is right. just FYI, Toby? That's correct. Okay, and then this is a good thing, in my view, for John and Rick to go offline with, with Alfred and Toby and whomever else and, and, you know, hash some of this out offline so that if there's, when we bring this up again, their, their, their detailed questions are, are answered because it's, it's these guys who are going to answer Alfred, Rick, John, Toby, he's right. That's my thought. So, so rather than have this item as another agenda item in any near future, I would, I would love to know that John and Rick have, hashed it out with Alfred offline and, and they can tell us, yeah, we, we, we followed that thread to the end of it. And here's, here's what we learned or here's what Alfred learned. Somebody's going to learn something. It's, it's okay. So can we, move, can we move on to um, the next item that Toby had at least? Yeah. What, what do you want to do? Where's Cliff? I'm waiting. Cliff's got to call it up. So. When you want to see next. Um, we did the capital plan and schedule of the indebtedness? Did we do both of those? Um, we did not talk about the indebtedness. Okay, let's give that a quick look. Okay, right, give me a minute. Is that a separate document, Toby, or is that in the capital plan document it, as it well? Was a, it was a separate document. Okay. Well, just, just to quickly tell you what was going on. Um, in this past year, um, we added the 2019 10 wheeler lease payment and that was paid out of the highway equipment fund, not the budget. So if you look at the bottom line, it says budgeted 103. Yeah. But, but the indebtedness was 138. So essentially you were underfunded in the budget by 34,000, which this time came out of the highway equipment fund because there was money there. In next year, there is no money in the highway fund and you didn't budget it. And so you're gonna be short $41,000 for the lease payment on the 2019 Western Star, just so you're aware. Okay, thank you for making us aware. Um, I'm looking at this screen to see if any, Board members have comment or question? Okay, next up, um, annual uh, financial plan. And I know we do this every year and Rick is probably familiar with them because he's worked with towns before. So if we could have that to look at. 
and this rarely changes because we don't um rarely changes it's the amount of is it, that's this is the one with the amount of miles of class one two and three roads correct toby no this is a this is a document that's created by shauna oh okay so, so once you guys set your budget of eight hundred and forty six thousand dollars I'll wait till it comes out. Oh yeah, this is the one that has class one, two, and three. Right, but that just shows you what the state is gonna pay you for those mileages. Right. And then the town tax funds are gonna be 688,000. And all she does below that in expenses is just divide things up by category and still totals $853,000. It's just resorting all of the line items and adding some together um under topics that they decide how to put together and it's a state thing and not a town thing so it's literally the same number you came up with for your budget you're just signing off on the fact that that's what the number is and that the and that the state is using our number and not changing it that's correct okay um so what we just need to do here is sign sign that's correct all right does anybody have any questions on the annual financial plan all right so we need a motion to approve and sign said documents i make the motion that we approve uh toby's presentation of the this is the compliance certification of compliance for town roads. Is that the one we were, is that the, no, the annual, annual, plan. annual financial plan? Annual, financial, plan annual financial plan, annual financial plan for the town roads. And that uh, Rick Keen be authorized to sign on behalf of the board. I'll second that. Okay, you ready to vote, Rick? Aye. Um, I'm an I. Let's see who's next. Sharon. Aye. Cliff. Aye. And John. Yes. All right. Road and bridge standards. Will that be sent to me for, for signature? Do I have to go down to town hall or do we? No, you can just take just go to the Google folder and print it off. And then sign and sign and scan. Sign right. and scan. Yep. And you're going to have more things to sign before the night is over. Okay, so, yeah, so sign off on financial plan. Right, and then probably these other two documents as well, road and bridge standards. So that's just a copy of the road and bridge standard that you approved last year. Yeah. And I only sent it to you as a reference. It doesn't need to be signed because you already signed it. It's in place. Okay. It, is the doc, it is the document that you're certifying in the next document, the certification of road standards that says we have one and you do and it has the date that you signed it last year mm -hmm. and all you need to do is sign that document and the okay. reason for, and the reason for that is the state needs that in order to allow us to be eligible for grants if we didn't have road standards we would not be available we would not be able to get grants so toby how often do we have to actually update review and formally update those road standards um, I, I don't think that there's a time limit on it, but as um, state standards change, you might have to review it. So, so I, so can't we say that we have reviewed it because it's here? We all had a chance to look at it. You're not telling us it needs any changes. That's correct. And then we can note in the minutes that we reviewed it um, on March twenty second, twenty. What year are we? 2021. Um, and Rick could put his little initials in the bottom, reviewed, select board reviewed. Just so no, we I so don't we, even know the I don't even know that he has to initial it if I mean I think signing off on the next document, you're saying that you have reviewed it, or else you wouldn't be signing it. So can we, maybe we could look at the next document and make that yeah, decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank 
There we go. See where it says February 24? You'll note that that's the date that we signed it, that other document. Yeah, I'm with you. The paper trail's there that we looked at it again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the, <clears throat> so this I need to sign off on? Well, we have to make a motion. So I'll make a motion that the select board approve the certification of compliance for town road and bridge standards and network inventory, and that we have reviewed the previous um, road and bridge standards and authorize Rick Keen to sign on behalf of the board because normally, um, this is a little aside, normally the full board would sign. So what I've been doing when I sign is I sign it, um, my name and say on behalf of the select board and usually attach a copy of the page of the minutes where the motion was made because it's not really feasible for us all to try to sign some of these documents. So that's my motion. Would anybody like to second it? I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? All right, Rick, time to vote. Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon. Aye. Um, oh, I almost went to Rose. Cliff. Aye. And John. Yes. All right, very good. Thank you, Toby. These um, get, again, I, I, I will scan this, sign it. Do I send that back to you, Denise, or do I go to Katie with this? Or I think... Um, Rick, Rick, I, will, I will send you an email address. You need to send it to Shauna Clifford of District 6 VTrans. Okay, we, we want to also want to copy though in the town hall, correct? Or you in the town office. Yeah. I mean town yeah. office, I meant. Yeah. Correct. So Rick, Rick, I can talk to you tomorrow about the process. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. Um, Denise, the other thing you did ask about the inventory of our roads. Yeah, what do we have that? We, we do. In 2017, we did a road erosion inventory with the assistance of Central Vermont Regional Planning. We were one of the first towns to do it. Is that the one that Dan Courier helped with? Uh, he did help a little. Yeah, Central Vermont. Yeah, okay. Regional That's Planning. what I'm. Re okay, I'm remembering right then. Right. So we have we have it, and we're up to date, and um, we're up to date on everything that's required by the state. Okay. Excellent. All right, thank you so much, Toby. Appreciate it. Okay, see ya. Thank you. Cliff? Just waving goodbye to Toby. Oh, okay. Um, Alfred, I didn't get anything from you about agenda items, so I assume that you really don't have much, but we do have the curb cut application from Gail Graham, and I already asked you if you had gone out and checked it out, and you said yes, you're ready to report to the board on it. Um, yeah. Is there anything else quickly that you would like to give us an update on? Um, you mean other than the, the curb, curb cut? cut? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just need to just briefly ask you about Green Up Day. Uh, they are asking to extend it for another hour. So instead of closing down at 12, they're going to close down at one. What day uh, so in May? What day in May is Green Up Day? It's the first May 1st. May 1st. So the question for the board is then, I assume that you well, are. Are you okay with the extra hour of two men, two men being being on overtime essentially? Okay, how about I put this on for it's so not till May 1st, so we have a couple of select board meetings. I'll put this on for a quick something. Well, we're having a meeting, uh, I think they decided on March 31st. So I was hoping to have an answer for them about that. I mean, essentially it's just two hours, two men, okay. two hours, you know what I mean? So it's a total of three hours then? Uh, no, there's only two men and they want it. They want to extend it one hour. They usually shut down at 12. They want to go until one. Right. But the total time is two men, but it's usually two hours per man. Now they're looking at three hours per man. Oh, no, it's they start at nine. We're always there at nine. So oh, nine, okay. nine to 12 is the is the normal, but they want to make it nine to one. And I mean, I, I know I'm in charge of overtime all winter long, and I just figured I would run it by you because uh -huh. 
it's uh, it's green up. It's a little bit different than overtime in the winter. So it's it's a pretty quick yes or no. It's really all I'm looking for. Do you have two? Do you have two people to do this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean we do it every year, so yeah. You know, well, we didn't ask. we didn't do it last year because of COVID, but okay, I was absent last year too, so that's right, you were, Sharon. So, so I what I'm understanding is the that what we're being asked for is two people from the road crew who usually staff staff the support the green up effort somehow. And so the yeah. issue, so the really what we're approving the overtime is basically the thing. Yes. Yeah. Normally we don't, normally we don't because it's always been a standard set hours, but this year it's because there's, I think Alfred's asking this time because we're adding another extra hour. Right. They want to extend the length of time that green up is brought to the depot. So it's two. So it's two hours of additional overtime over what we're used to seeing. Right. Yes. Okay. So I'm willing tonight to make the motion that we authorize uh, a total of. Is it a total of eight hours of overtime? Uh, it's it's four. Yeah, total of eight. A total of eight hours of overtime for town staff to support green up on May first. Yeah, that's it. Well. Yeah, so for uh, you know, I don't, I don't. Can I? Can we get a second on that motion so we can discuss it? Because I, I don't agree with it. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay, further discussion. <laughs> I, I don't think we. I think it's the road commissioner's job to decide. Mm -hmm. You know what it takes to get this job done. This is our standard thing. This is what we do every year, and I don't want people standing at the landfill up oh, time to go or you're not going to get paid. I mean, the job, it may, who knows? This is just what happens. Green yep. up would be just like a snowstorm. I agree with that too. That's, that's another way to move this item along. <laughs> no, I, 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 so I will, I will prove it. I don't think I'll we approve it. This is Alfred's job. I don't want yeah. to put this shit. I'm, I'm willing to, what, am I allowed Thank to rescind? Am I, do, I rescind my, do I rescind my motion? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I rescind. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. No, I agree with that. Alfred. Off you go. I guess I should have just just made you aware instead of ask for per, for permission. That's, That's right. right. That's ask right. for yeah. forgiveness, not for permission. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on to the next very quick one. Um, Town of Woodbury uh, came to me asking if they can borrow a grader at some point this spring. Uh, they have blown their motor in theirs because it's actually the same year as ours. Um, and they've blown their motor, they're gonna be without a grader. So they asked me if they can borrow hours uh, off and on through mud season. Again, I think that's your call. Okay. If, our, if, our, if our roads are being, are okay and we don't need it, um, the only thing, you know, I assume that this is how it works. I don't know for sure. If something breaks, right. they gotta pay to fix it. They gotta pay to fix it, that's well, right. They're not that, gonna replace a motor if it's worn out. Right. But no, no, right. Well, it's got to be within reason. And it's the same, right. it's the same thing as like the the um, mutual aid that we talked about this this winter. Yeah. If yeah, that came up for with COVID and whatnot. You just share and you work it out and uh, we will come up with some sort of trade. They'll haul gravel for us from a couple of days or something, depending on the use that they use our grader, uh, whatever. We'll make some sort of deal. Uh, again, I just want you guys to be aware so that if you see our grader grading Woodbury roads, you'll have an understanding as to why. Well, I think what you can do, Alfred, if, if they borrow it, shoot us an email and say, I loan the grader to Woodbury because don't, don't forget, there's broke down. So if we get any calls, we can say, oh, yeah, we were aware of that and saying instead of sounding like, oh, gee, I don't know. Right, right. You know, but I think it's I think it's your call. Between the Woodbury Fire Department serving us and now the greater, I'd like to make a simple motion that we merge Callus with Woodbury and just get done. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm it could be it. done. All right. So can we move on to Gail Graham's curb cut? Yes, I'm ready. All right. So um, there we go. 
And I held off on putting this on the agenda till Alfred had time to go and take a look at the site and see what, if any, recommendations he might make. Yep. Um, can you give us a little update, Alfred, on your uh, site yeah. visit? Uh, the site distance is all fine. It's on a straight straightaway, and you can see for almost ever both ways. Um, we have a culvert, a cross culvert, uh, that crosses Adamat Road that is um, uphill from the curb <laughs> cut. So, um, and just because of the photography of the land, it doesn't need a culvert at the, at the uh, curb cut. But because of our culvert being above, there's going to be water running out of our culvert and it's going to interfere with their, with their new road, their new driveway. So mm -hmm. I'm recommending that they put a culvert in their driveway. Which I mean, who's out. they? Who's they? They is whomever is going to build the driveway. Okay. Um, it's just a recommendation so that their road don't get washed out by town water. Their culvert will be out of the right of way. So it won't interfere with the town at all. It's just a recommendation. So Alfred, it's not a, Alfred, so it's not Alfred, a, re, it's not Alfred, a requirement. Alfred, right. please yep. don't take this the wrong way. But okay. um, if you're going to be competing on this job. I am not competing on this job. Okay, okay then that's perfect. Then there's no issue. But if, you, if ever you were to, which is nothing wrong with that, we just yep. need to know in advance. That's all. I, I have no inclination of working on this job at all. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. No. Point, point well taken. Thank you, John. So this is, um, I notice on the application that it says it's for agricultural use. Uh, okay. I can't speak to that. I, I mean, I didn't fill this out. I don't know why that is. So is it, a, is it a driveway or is it agricultural use? Is, is, Gail? Gail with, is Gail with us? Yeah, she is. I can, I can even see her. Okay, at the, right now it is agricultural. Um, I'm in the middle of doing surveys. The survey was done today. <clears throat> Ultimately, there will be a house built on the other uh, on the other side on uh, my property, and it, it gives access to that building. But I'm in the middle of uh, trying to get permits and everything. So it's going to be eventually. So it's going to first be used for agricultural, and then there's going to be a house built there. Is that what I'm understanding? It's going to be both. Both. Okay. Also so. Ultimately, when I can get a permit done, if ever, there there will be a house, ultimately. When you say permit ever, is that a town? Pardon me? Zoning? When you say permit, are you talking about the curb cut? Or are you talking about a town permit for a, 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 the creation of a, an additional lot? I'm talking about a town permit. I'm talking about two different things. <sighs> Permit for uh, the development and and uh, for the house. I'm trying to get a permit now to um, have a house built there. So does this change the uh, whole process? I'm not sure. How many lots are there right now? Pardon me. I'm just so right now. There's your house, Pat Finney's. Um, is there somebody? I mean, is this? I can't understand you. I guess I'm just trying to understand. So it's the creation of another lot to build the house. Ultimately. And so how many lots have- The reason I've said ag agricultural is, is that's what it is right now. Access to, there's a, a lot there, a vacant lot right now that it's going yeah. through. Uh, Denise, can we just um, maybe note 
you assuming, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm assuming, and that this could be a flawed assumption, but for the sake of discussion, assuming we're going to, we otherwise are willing to approve the curb cut with Alfred's recommendation, then can't we just uh, note in the minutes that we are asking Gail to correct it from agricultural to residential because the purpose of the curb cut is, is, is so that there can be another house scale. That's what I'm hearing. So what do you want me to do? I would just change it to residential right now. Yeah, I think you need to change it to residential. So do I need to resubmit this? No, I think we can, I think we can all, if that's what, is really if, if that's what is actually happening then i think we can make a note and i've got the curb cut application right here we can make a note that it is um we can just change it well if the board isn't willing to do that i, I, right. I would suggest gail at very least gail send us an email confirming that she'd like that change but i don't know it's already signed I don't, we can't be changing an application that's, That's true. Well, can can we do it this way though? If Gail sends the email when Rick is printing it off to sign it, can he make a margin note that says per select board discussion on 322 and follow up email from Gail on 324? This curb cut is actually for a residential. And then those two again, we could have a page from the minutes as Denise said earlier and Gail's email. So the pay, I think, isn't the point for the paper trail to be really clear? Yeah, and I mean, we, we don't, all we do is grant the curb cut. We don't have anything to do with the permit for a driveway. That has to go through zoning or if it's the creation of a fourth lot, then it's up to, um, and whether or not that has to go to zoning or DRB, that's not our call. Right. We are, our authority only lies in granting the curb cut. We just we don't want to create problems for Gail down the road no. because it says agricultural and somebody finds that little tiny thing to make us think about. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in the long run, it saves Gail having to go back or be in violation. Can we can we just approve it as a as a residential curb cut and Gail can fill out another paper just so that it's clean? Well, we can either do it that way and have Gail just resubmit the first page and- so Do I have to pay another $50? No. No, 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 no. no. $600, <laughs> Gail. <laughs> the, the, cleanest, the cleanest way would actually be for Gail to submit the front page of the curb cut application and just say corrected on it. And we would use the same permit number, the same, you already paid the fee. We're not gonna charge you another fee. We put it on the agenda for next meeting really quickly just to approve it. And, and it's done and it's done right. So are you going to email something to me? Or I, I, I'm not clear on what you want me to do. I will send you back the application that you sends in, I can scan this page. So what we're asking you to do is re-complete <clears throat> the application for a curb cut permit. And instead of checking residential where it says new curb cut, you're gonna check whichever one it is, it's residential. Instead of agricultural, you meant, yeah. No, it's going from, it's, it's not gonna be agricultural, it's gonna be- Right, it's going to residential. Residential. So it's not a big deal. Can't she just can't she just just uh, mark it up and then initial it? Isn't that legal? And then just she get it back. Yeah, to she you? could she could do that too. Instead of having to fill the whole thing out, I'm just saying to, to yeah. say filling the whole thing out again. Yeah, well, yeah, just that out. The point just is that mark. the point is that Gail needs to do it. That's we don't we can't change. No, that's what I'm saying. She can do it. Just, yeah, just absolutely. pretty much just mark a different check, the agriculture or the, the residential mark and then initial it. Yeah. Right. So, that, so that the change is on the first page and then she doesn't have to do that whole fancy uh, mapping that she spent a lot of time with, I'm sure. Well, and that's mm -hmm. why I, that's why I said the first page, Alfred, if you heard yeah. me. Right. Just, the, just fix the, fix the first page. You don't need to do the map all over again. 
And that way it's in that way it's done right. We have a clear paper trail and we can approve it um, the next time we meet. Next week, next next meeting. Okay. It's fine with me. I don't have a dog in the fight. And I, I don't think Gail's not gonna slow you down any, is it? It's it's to your benefit it's to your benefit, Gail, to have the paper trail be correct. It really is. I understand. It's just yeah. I know it's frustrating. I'm totally frustrated. Yeah. I'm just beginning this. So you just send me an email and tell me what to do. I, I'm okay. I'm confused at this point. Okay. All it's, right. I didn't, I didn't lie about it. At this point in time, it is agricultural. Okay. So I didn't yeah. lie. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's it's not that. You just have to make sure it's correct. That's all when we yeah. submit it. That's the only. Right, and, and this gets, re and just so you know, this gets recorded in the land records. So that's why you want it to be right. So that if ever something comes up and they do a title search, I, the land I, records I, are, are accurate. I won't belabor this. I misunderstood. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No all right. Problem. Sounds good. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Alfred. I had a question. Denise, yeah, Rose, Rose has had, had a question. Been up forever. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Rose. I didn't see it. On that application, I thought that it said Leonard Road. Does the application say the curb cut is actually on Adamant Road? That might be something else that needs to get corrected. What is on what? It shows it on Adamant Road. I think what Gail did is it says her mailing address. Does it say it? Okay. It's on Adamant Road. I think, yeah, that, part, then, I think that part's fine. fine. No. I see what, what you're saying. I, I see what you're saying, Rose. It okay, at the here. top. It's up in the in there. It says. My address is Leonard Road, okay? Right, but where, where it yes. says. Can you scroll to the, to the Cliff. Yeah. Can you? What is the that? distance? If you scroll down to the map, it shows it on Adamant Road. Yeah. No. It's yeah. Yeah. I see. Thing. Yeah. No. I'm talking about at the top in the no, language part, not in the it, map. At the it, very top. Right. On the first it page. Right. Does it say that this is access on Adamant Road? Okay. We can't have everybody talking at once. That's related to the distance to the nearest intersection. Gail, right. you're exactly right. The nearest intersection with a town road, the nearest town road intersection is Leonard Road. And so that's what Gail <laughs> measured out from Leonard Road. That is exactly correct. All right. Okay. I think we're, is everybody good to move on? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about, um, first off, thank you to Scott and Pam and Michelle and Christian and who did I miss? Um, so we're not going to be able to get into this in depth tonight. Um, and I mentioned that to Scott and Pam. I, had, I didn't know how much time to put on the agenda. So we want to keep this... Um, this brief, John asked me to put it on the end, so I did. And here we are. So Cliff had a, Scott sent a picture that he wanted Cliff to bring up. And that will probably generate the discussion, but we've only got, you know, like 15 minutes tonight. Well, and ultimately what we're aiming to do is just appoint a couple of people to deepen the issue and bring it back to us eventually yeah. so yeah i can just give um a little um snippet that we at cvrpc are here to help the town in any way we can and i invited michelle braun from friends of the winooski river um who deals a lot with culverts that might have issues with aquatic organism passage, which means literally that the fish can't swim upstream <laughs> through the culvert. And this particular culvert at 
uh, where Kent Hill Road crosses Peak and Brook was designated as having um, what we call an AOP um, barrier or an issue. So um, Michelle was going to talk a little bit about her some funding that she might have, but she might not have. So I'm not really sure where that stands exactly. But also this is this was 1984. Scott gave this picture where this culvert blew out because it was jammed with woody debris. Um, you guys know this was before my time. So a lot of you folks know more about this than I do, including Christian, who is actually um, living in Callis at the time as a, as, as a kid on the school bus seeing this. So <laughs> Kristen can attest to this as well. And Christian's our new transportation planner. So if it looks like there would be, um, I'm, I'm not the transportation planner, so I don't know what funding we can maybe bring from VTrans, but that's sort of why Christian is here tonight. There may be funding available from an emergency emergency management perspective as well. And that would be Grace Vincent at our office. And I've kind of looped her into this as well. But ultimately, um, you know, for the emergency management funding, it would be 25% match for final design for the culvert. So we're here just to kind of listen and support you guys. And Michelle, do you want to just talk a little no, bit? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want okay. to John wanted this issue raised, so I want to give John, um, board member, Absolutely. a chance Sorry. to speak because I can see this blossoming into a really long discussion and we don't have yeah. the bandwidth yeah. tonight to do that. Yeah. So I'd like John to speak. I remember this issue from way back. Scott was on the board when this came up as well. Um, so some of us have a history on this, but if John could speak. Well, no, I mean, this culvert's in need of changing. It's really undersized on the main stem there. And so the, the idea as Scott articulated was to save aside that larger culvert and move it to that Kent Brook, is that what it's called? Uh, replace Kent Brook culvert with the, the main stem culvert. And then, um, <clears throat> well, what are we gonna do? Put a uh, <clears throat> squash culvert or uh, Putting in a bridge, I don't know what we would be doing, but we need to perform these upgrades, and it, it it's it's overdue. And you know, the fish passage is important, but also we need to further protect our investment in that building, the town hall. And so, uh, I think you know, this is something Rick and I might want to work on if that works for the select board. Yeah, I, I guess I'd like to see John and Rick working with. Scott and whoever to come up with something and bring it back to the full board for discussion and questions. Like I said, we're not going to, that's, I'm sorry that I wasn't more clear that we weren't going to really have time to flush this whole thing out tonight. Um, but we obviously aren't, aren't going to be able to do that because I could see this taking a really long time and it would be a good discussion and everybody wants to learn, you know, the full board needs to understand and be aware of all the good things that we need to know about this. Does anybody agree? I, I yeah, I agree. I agree with the the sentiment, and I and I um, this is consistent with the con the organizational meeting we had earlier. And so, looking to John and Rick as the guys with the background and expertise to kind of flesh out the issues and bring us back something that that is, you know, digestible. Um, and I would say invite them to go so far as making a recommendation, not to the exclusion, Denise of leaving information out, but distilling information down and saying, when we follow all of our threads, th this is our recommendation, but here's some other options. Yeah, and they need to consult with the road commissioner. Yeah. So yeah, that's, what, that's what I would suggest for tonight, that we anoint Rick and John to work on this with Scott and CVRPC and the road commissioner. Um, and come up with a plan or a time frame of bringing this back to the board. Does that makes sense, John and Rick. Yeah, I, I mean, I want to see what the priority in this, you know, in terms of 
I mean, I I don't know the history on this culvert. I don't know how un, un, how much of a problem this has been. Whether it's undersized, I mean, has it been a failure problem for us, or is it, uh, or you know, it, and relative to the other critical culverts in town that we've got, this I'm guessing this has been a very expensive project. So we have to look at what we aren't doing because we're doing this if it's not a problem i really want to know what the problems really are what our risk is for the time being mm-hmm. and then we attack this at the right time you know so well, if it's gonna take, so if it's gonna if it's gonna take funding then we have to plan ahead and budget for that yeah um, really. so i think the from from my perspective as one board member it would be kind of a timeline or an outline of what you're going to, you know, meeting with the people that we talked about and coming up with, you know, how much, having an idea of how much this is going to cost, what the town would have to put in, what's the timeline to do it. Alfred needs to be involved to work with, you know, the road crew, what, what that means as far as their time commitment, if it's the road crew that does this. Um, but I want to give John and Scott an opportunity to quickly okay. weigh in. John? I have nothing to weigh in. I just did. I'm okay. Done. All right, Scott. Um, thanks, Denise, uh, Michelle, and Christian. It's very nice to meet you, even though it's by Zoom. Um, and I do hope we can get together in a more focused way on just this on just this uh, issue. Um, it's actually uh, comes out of the the uh, study for the town hall. Uh, the town hall task force uh, put the, the, the flood status of the town hall as the number one issue before we could go ahead with fixing up the town hall. Um, we, were at, we were able to, to um, get funding for a study by Malona McBroom of this and that study uh, really has uh, Rick, I hope you get a chance to take a look at it. Uh, I've got of, it. I've glanced at it already. I haven't got to yeah. read it in full detail. Yeah. Um, so that so this is this issue has kind of been going dragging along since 2011, and it's the problem is that it's kind of fallen between the cracks a number of times. And again, thank you, Denise, for giving us a chance to bring this up again. It's going to take a long time and a lot of planning, and um, and it does. You know, it's not the normal kind of thing that Toby and Alfred are able to get grants for. And that as because of that, it's sort of fallen off of our radar. But I think uh, with Rick <coughs> and John um, and help from CVRPC, we can uh, put this in its proper place and uh, have a plan, <coughs> hopefully getting it fixed before this happens again. And you know it's gonna happen again. Thanks a lot. Uh, look forward thank you, to uh, thank you, Scott. This, whoever. Bye bye. Cliff, do you have any comments on this? Uh, I agree with the approach that's been outlined. Okay. So let, we should let the minutes reflect that John and Rick will be working on this with in cooperation and consultation with the road commissioner, Scott. CVRPC and Michelle, whose agency I already forgot. The Winooski River. Friends of the Winooski River. River. (laughs) Right. And nice to meet you, Christian and Michelle. Thank you so much for your help. Do you folks have any questions for us about um, any mechanisms at this point, or you want to just wait till we come back? I think the, the, the one question is just to Denise, Denise's point earlier about timeline, you know, yeah. Pam, Michelle, Christian, whoever, you know, maybe it's Scott, in your ideal world, the select board has approved a, an approach mm-hmm. with, a, with a planned budget by when? And if it's right, because we obviously don't have the money this year for it. So it would have to be something if you can all make it happen to get this rolling to do, you know, it's something would have to be considered in the next fiscal year budget. And I see Michelle has her hand up. 
Yeah. Um, so there are a bunch of different sources of funding depending on what the primary issue is or what we can, how we can present the primary issue, whether it's erosion, whether it's um, flooding, whether it's, um, as, as Pam alluded to, fish passage. And Pam and I were talking about this today and you know what the options are. But essentially the first step has to be um, a feasibility and design study. And, um, and we would need to find funding for that feasibility and design study. Ideally, you know, when Friends of the Winooski works on these projects, um, we try to do it at no cost to the landowner, um, which in this case is the municipality. Um, if, it's a, if flood resilience is really the best route to go in terms of funding, then as Pam said, there is a cost share of 25% from the municipality. But initially that would just be for the feasibility and design. So it's not a ton of money, um, but that would be the first step. Okay. So we'll be looking at feasibility and design, possibly this year, maybe next year, and then if and then construction in the future. So I okay. think that's what would be good for the board to have that information to help guide our dis you know our discussion and decision. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like there's little milestones along the way. So maybe that's the first thing, Michelle, is, is a, okay, one page, here's the milestones, here's our timeline, off we go, going to go work on this with Rick and John and the team. And I would just add, just like Michelle, Shett, Michelle, Michelle said, it has to do with what grant program you would use. Like if it goes down the emergency management road, um, then that cost share is 25% and grant applications are, can be accepted this September for that type of funding. Um, and then it goes to um, FEMA from this, like the state sends a package to FEMA January. So there's that time between September and January that you have to- Well, I think part of the discussion, I think part of, part of the discussion you all have might be what is the best appropriate funding absolutely and that's, what, and that's what we would be looking for yep sounds good and just keep in mind that you also have to show certain things for certain pots of funding yeah like you know that there's been past damage if it's a emergency management type of, of fund um yep. if it's just okay. cash, so we have to show that there's issues with the fish upstream and downstream so yep. that type of thing so right so we'll wait We'll wait for you all to report back with what you think or what your recommendation is for the best option and what other options you might have looked at that we would want to understand. Scott? So who will be the convener of this group? Um, probably, well, I'll let Rick and John figure that out. Yeah, we'll now figure it out. You know, we'll just, what, what I wanted to give me a rough idea of when you want us to report back. Give us a um, I don't know that we know that. I think that would be up to okay. you to tell us. I'll you know? connect. I'll try to connect with Pam and Michelle, and then also with Alfred and and John. then Toby yes. and. Then well, now you want to, and, yeah. Can you include Christian too, Rick? Please. Yeah, absolutely. I've actually put Christian on <laughs> in my note. I'm making notes on what we're okay. saying. Thank so. you. And, and I'm gonna, to, I'll give you another email to somebody else at my office. Just yeah, so I'll need. I'm, We'll need to put a shell together of, you know, what okay. my basic information is. To, I'm, I'm coming up to speed on all this, you guys, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit. Yeah, this is only Rick's second meeting. Yeah, <laughs> so we can. Right, and Katie takes really good notes, Rick, so she'll have mm -hmm. all this in the minutes. That's great. I'm just making my own to-do, yeah. so, yeah, that's very good. Okay, are we, is everybody <laughs> com comfortable and know what we're doing? All right. So let's move on to. Um, Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, now. Thanks everybody. Scott. Thank you all. Thanks, Pam. So we have um, a request by Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District to appoint or reappoint our delegates because they have an annual meeting coming up um, the first week of April, and they would like us to. Um, 
tell them who our delegates are by today. Um, so that's basically, it. this should take very little time as long as um, John and Bill Powell don't want to be reappointed. I think Bill does, but I haven't talked with him. I think we appoint him and then he can always back out. Yeah. yeah. Well, and appointments carry over, but for their records, they want to, they just want us to do this. Okay. So is there any discussion or comments or? I think Katie, not? Katie's going to, she needs us to spell a name or something. Oh, what, what Katie? I see that in the past, we've noted that they are district delegate and district delegate alternate. Is that different than board of supervisor? Yeah, well, it's the board of supervisors that's asking for us to make the delegation. But if you're right, if there's a delegate and then there's the um, alternate, oh. which has been Bill and John respectively. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a, the delegation of select board authority to speak on behalf of the town at the board meetings uh, on the board of commissioners. So we would be commission. I'm a, a, a backup, what I call, what I call me alternate commissioner. Alternate. And, yeah. and Bill is the primary commissioner. Okay. So I would make a motion um, to reappoint Bill Powell as our delegate. And he has just, by the way, been, he has served, on the executive committee for quite a while, and um, John as our alternate representative. They're called representatives. So Bill Powell as the primary representative, and John Brabant as the alternate representative. I'll second that. Okay, would you like to authorize me to sign this form? Let's authorize Rick, because he's signing all the other stuff tonight. Well, I don't think that matters, but just pass in the love, pass in the love. <laughs> I've got the I've got the form right here in my hand. It work? Right. Is it it's is it a different kind of form than all the other stuff that just comes in an email? Yep. I don't care. Yeah, that's go ahead. That's fine. I mean, if you've got it right there, that's something I don't have to download. And, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm I'm good either way. So, are you making a friendly amendment to the motion, Rick? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I'll, I'll amend that to to have Denise sign that document and return it. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Let's vote. Rick. Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon. Aye. John. Yes. And Cliff. Hi. All right. I'll get this right out to them because they wanted it by today. All right. Um, I asked Rick to join us. He contacted me um, about use of the money that we appropriated in a warrant item in 2014. And I think the documents are in the folder. They're kind of weird to look at, so I apologize for the way that they look. But it was the warned item um, from town meeting in 2014. And then there's the page from the minutes of town meeting 2014. And we appropriated $3,000 to be used by the Adamat Community Club. So Rick, while just calling that up, you want to just give us a brief description of what you're looking to do in working yes. with TV. Thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to say hi to all of you. Um, and I will make it brief. Um, we got that $3,000 by vote of town meeting a few years ago. It's been sitting in an escrow account ever since. As we have investigated at the club, what was involved in um, making the place accessible, which was our original intention. Um, and um, first it was just to uh, build a ramp, but uh, it quickly got more complicated because somebody said, well, what point is a ramp if we, you can't get in the door? 
well, what happens if we get in the door and you can't get into the second door? And if you can't get into the second door, how are you going to use the bathroom? So then the conversation quickly became, well, what do we have to do to make the community club ADA accessible? And that really ran into a lot of money very, very quickly. So um, we tabled that. And um, now uh, we have a chance, thanks to the uh, Preservation Trust of Vermont, uh, they are um, administering a grant program by a, a foundation called the 1772 Foundation that um, provides funds for things that we have not been able to get grants for, um, specifically uh, external uh, exterior painting, and it really needs a new paint job. And uh, sash preservation, uh, especially on those four beautiful big windows that look out over um, the, uh, the back of uh, Sodom Pond. So my uh, proposal that I uh, went to Denise with was, could we uh, use that $3,000 as matching money? Um, the, the grant to the 1772 foundation is for, um, the, the, uh, their limit is asking for $10,000. And um, we still have some uh, funds left over from preservation trust that we could apply to that and um, money that's uh, in hand in our bank account. But uh, the question is, um, can we re, um, adjust what this money is being used for? Um, it, it was originally intended to for accessibility. And what we might do this summer is just with our available funds um, buy a modular ramp and kind of leave it at that. Um, and we'll, and uh, say that the uh, community, uh, which I'm sure will uh, <laughs> will not be upset that we did the best we could for the time being, and uh, perhaps down the road another generation might find the wherewithal to uh, really bring the place up to ADA uh, accessibility form. Um, so that's the question. Can we use that $3,000 that has been allocated to uh, use that as uh, matching money in this grant that we are applying for? So I guess the documents that I had scanned, um, and I thought Katie put them in the folder, but maybe they're not there. The article in 2014, Article 26 read, to see if the town will spend $3,000 for renovations to the Adamat Community Club to be used as matching grant funds. The organization has been working with PTV to obtain grant funding to comply with accessibility requirements and make necessary building upgrades. They're in the folder. They're in the folder, Denise. Um, yep, yeah, they're there. They're sort of, well, I'm not even gonna say where they are. They're probably in everyone's list differently. Uh, one of my questions is, is I, I have that one in, I have an article 29 or article 28 that has a, the usual service groups and I'm, oh, it's article 26 on that one. So yeah, this, yeah we're, we're not usually included on the other service groups. So are these voted? Oh, these are the minutes. Okay. It's the article in the minutes. I got it. So, okay, thank you. So what is the, so I, isn't the question what, um, well, I have two questions. One is whether we can, we, whether we can approve and the select board something that is different or authorize something different than what the town asked for or approved. But then the question becomes, is this different? Mm -hmm. when you look at the actual language. Yes, the, and, the, and the question that I raised with Denise is how narrow is that language? Because the money will be spent for preservation purposes and renovation purposes. Um, just will, not. It, will, will, it be used as, will it be used as matching grant, Rick? Yes. Okay. So use, so that's, so part, that's, of, part of a match. Okay. And the, and the article reads and make necessary building upgrades. 
So this is why we're bringing the question to the board to see if the yeah. article and the use of the funds match what the community center would like to do now. Yeah, I, I, uh, my memory was that uh, the 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 word uh, or the concept of accessibility was in there somewhere. Um, um, so the you know uh, again the question is how uh, is what we want to do come under um, what that uh, what that article said it was going to do. So if so said another way if the if the phrase um if we if the phrase to comply with accessibility requirements wasn't there has been working with preservation trust of vermont and other entities to obtain grant funding and <laughs> make necessary building upgrades if that if that were what was voted on we wouldn't have a problem right right yes yes okay so the question is well, and that's what we did vote on. Yeah. Right. Well, we did, but we but it included to comply with accessibility requirements. Right. Um, well, the and it has the operative and it doesn't say <laughs> comply with accessibility requirements that will make necessary building up or gate. That would be a fail in my mind. Yeah. And it but doesn't. I think, I think I it's, it's it doesn't say it doesn't say or either. It just says and. I know. It says, it's an excellent question. Love the question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just didn't want to go ahead and uh, make this grant proposal without uh, making sure with uh, everybody in, on the select board that, that I was um, within the correct parameters. Yeah. Do you guys well, have other, other, select, other select board members, what do you... What's your thoughts on this, um, John? Do you guys have experience with this who've been on the board longer than I have? I don't have that much to say, right. you know? This I'm, I mean, I, in my mind, it, it, I think it meets the, the, the test of using those funds for a grant match. Um, I wish the wording of the, article had been maybe different um and said or instead of and but you know it's it's what seven years later yeah and we're and we're rehashing you know who i i don't remember the discussion from town meeting there wasn't the minute, much of one <laughs> yeah the minutes are pretty i mean the minutes just say basically that it was a it was authorized yeah. um so in my mind it i can i can justify using this for what Rick is requesting for the community club. But I'd be interested right. to hear if other people, you know, is, we, we rarely have this come up, let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, let's get it done. Yeah. And, and I don't, and I, and I think maybe a, a nuance is that we're not so much authorizing because we're, we, that we shouldn't do, but we're perhaps agreeing with Rick's interpretation that the spirit of the provision that the town approved is consistent with what a community club intends to do. Yeah, I think I yes. think I like I like the idea of the um, spirit of the intent. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a liberal reading rather than a narrow one. Right, and that we're not yeah. approving. Do do you guys agree that we're not actually approving? Because that makes it feel like there there's a departure. Well, I think that. Um, Sandra will want to know that the select board authorize the use of the funds somehow so they can be taken out of escrow. I'm not sure how that works. I guess that would be a Sandra question. Is that, would that be normal? Would that be normal even if, well, even if there, if this question weren't on the table? Yeah. Well, you know, the appropriations that we do to all the service organizations, it's just voted on. And after the beginning of the new fiscal year, the office staff just issues the money to I'm just I'm just thinking out loud, thinking this through. They just authorize the use of those funds and send them out when there's um, other items in the budget for existent example, like the purchase of some equipment for the town. Um, you know, we eventually authorize it and approval of the orders. 
Well, yes, in this case, um, the the uh, check was written directly after that town meeting. Okay, to the, to the Adam so, Community Club. So, so the escrow account is our own. Oh, okay. Escrow. So that's that's a little different then. So, yeah, um, I might oh. be interested to get Cliff and Rick's comments. Yeah, I would uh, suggest that this has already been approved by the voters, so it's not the select board's job to approve it. Yeah. We are simply agreeing that the uh, proposed use is in line with what was approved by the voters to the best of our understanding of how this is written. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah would so I, I would agree with Cliff on that too. I think that yeah, makes so sense. I don't, I don't yeah. think there's any motion for us to make. Good. Um, okay. I think that I, I, I commend you for being very conscientious and uh, mm -hmm. bringing it to our attention. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. And I think, uh, you know, this is a, whether we get the grant or not is another question. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. I hope you do. So, uh, you know, if we do get the grant, we'll probably spend our own from, from our own funds to get a, a modular ramp for this summer. Yeah. Um, and if not, maybe we'll we'll be back to square one. All right. Okay. Um, Katie, Katie has a question, Denise. Oh, sorry, Katie. Go ahead. Thanks. I just had a question as a member of the public, Rick. I wonder if we have um, disabled community members who are involved with that that question at the time in 2014. If you are aware of like folks who are weighing in or or a, a disability, you know advocacy group um, and and or like how someone could provide feedback to the community club if they have feelings about the funds not being used for accessibility. Yeah, well, the, it's, um, the person who first brought this up uh, years ago was um, Cindy Gardner Moss, Morris, whose, whose parents uh, both had, uh, you know, real struggle with the uh, with the steps and uh, more of a struggle every year. And uh, I have been consulting with Cindy as we uh, try to figure out what uh, what works best for the community. And I did um, have a, it was just as the pandemic broke out, so there was no um, real follow-up with uh, uh, contact at VCIL, um, whether um, they had any uh, suggestions or uh, whether they knew Thank you. Goodbye, Rose. Bye. <laughs> okay, Cliff. Um, not anything specific to report on town hall. We are getting some quotes uh, for the uh, water um, purification filtration system. So at some point we'll bring that forward for the board to review. Um, waiting for the quotes to come in before we know what kind of price range that's going to be in, because that will determine how many quotes we'll have to get. If it for some reason ends up being more than $5,000, we have a new set of rules we have to follow. I don't think it'll be in that range, but we're waiting for the quotes to come in. Um, nothing significant to report on the IT front or anything. But uh, for the Friends of Town Hall, I would like to tentatively get us on the schedule for our last meeting in April as a possible date for the Friends Group to approach the select board uh, with the revised management agreement and associated documents that we'd like to uh, all put in front of you at the same time. Well, that's about it. Oh, everyone's speechless. Mm. Just blown away, Cliff. Mm. <laughs> I even kept Rose on and because she must have been hanging on my every word. Yeah. No, I just I wanted to give you the opportunity to go down through the Friends of Hall and IT and those things. Hi, yep. Scott. Hi Scott. Scott. Thank you, Scott. Good to see you. Anything else under those updates, Cliff? 
That's all I had. Okay. Um, I just wanted to remind folks that we have our quarterly joint meeting with East Cal—I mean East Montpelier Select Board um, to meet with the East Montpelier Fire Department. This is in District Cliff for um, Rick's benefit. We try to meet quarterly with EMFD Good. to be kept informed <coughs> of what's going on, you know, budget updates, those kinds of things, just so we have a good dialogue with them. And that okay. meeting is Thursday, and it'll be via Zoom. So once they set that up, they said they would send out the Zoom invites. Maybe that will be our last Zoom one. Okay. Um, I don't know. We'll see. With all this variant stuff going on, I don't know. Hopefully, it's not, hopefully that's an evening, is it? it is yes, a, yes, it's an okay. evening. Just to fill up your calendar so you have things to look forward to. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> My days don't <laughs> look good right now. They're really busy. Okay. Um, and then I guess I would like the board to go into executive session, if we could, please to discuss um, its contract. So I'm not sure exactly what the proper statutory authority is, but it, it falls under 1 BSA section 313A. Is there a section? So, so move, or did you make a motion? So uh, it's 3A, 313A1A. Okay. Second. Good. All right. So we have to unplug Orca. Thank you so much, Katie. We'll get you back Thanks, to you. With, I'll get back to you with when we ad, when we adjourned and if we made any motions. Sounds good. Everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye, Bye, Rose. Can you good night. Take a vote? Oh yes, we have to vote. Bye bye. Rick. Nice to see you. Take care, bye, Rose. Bye, Rose. Okay, let's vote, Rick. Aye. I'm an eye. Cliff. Aye. Sharon. Aye. And John. Yes. Okay, bye, Orca. Bye, Jerome.